Hey everyone, today we're going to go over some of the basics of drawing with symmetry in Autodesk Sketchbook on the iPad Pro. So let's get right into it and open the app Autodesk Sketchbook. It opens up into the gallery. Now if you've used it before, this is where all your projects will be sitting. You can choose any of them here just by scrolling back and forth. All you have to do is touch one and it will open up into the app with all the layers that you can work on and you can continue to work on projects in this way. But we're gonna open a new sketch today. So we're gonna use this plus sign to create a new canvas. You can do it different ways. You can choose something from your camera roll, from iTunes, or even scan something in. But we're gonna choose this new sketch option and it's gonna come up with a choice of how we want our canvas to look. So if we go in here, they give you the option of rotating your canvas and they give you some presets. So if we go into the presets, there's four options in here, which I guess they consider to be the most common. And if I choose screen resolution size, I end up with this rectangle and I can rotate it here. But I want to make my own size of canvas because I like to work with what I call a 300 DPI resolution and an eight by eight inch is about what I make my mandalas. So eight times 300 is 2400. That's the pixel size that I want for my canvas. I use that in all the apps and then I can transfer my artwork between the apps as well, knowing that my size is consistent. So we're going with 2400 by 2400 and we're gonna hit create. And our canvas pops up in the app so we can zoom it in and out. And if you are pinching it like this to zoom it in and out. You can see down here, it has zoom and angle. So it's telling you what you're doing to your canvas when you're moving it around with your fingers. When I'm drawing, I'm often zooming in and zooming out and rotating the canvas around. So that little feature is handy to know where I am with relation to the canvas. So today we're focusing on symmetry. So we're gonna go up into the top toolbar here and we're going to choose the symmetry option. So it's right here, right around the center. That's the one. So when you touch on it, another bar pops up with options of different kinds of symmetry. So the first one on the left, it turns blue and that is the Y axis. So symmetry happening on the Y. The next one is the X and I turn off the Y there and now I just have the X axis. If they're blue, see I have them both on now, the X and the Y. If they're blue in the toolbar, that means that they're on. And if they're white, that means they're off. And then finally here we have the radial and we have a lever right here, move it back and forth and you can change the number of sections. So the lowest is two, which looks a lot like the X or the Y axis. I can move it up to four, which is like having both those on, although it's gonna operate different, I'll show you that later. And then I can move the lever all the way up to 16. That's the highest number, which is pretty high for a digitally created item. So you've got a lot of different options here on this symmetry toolbar. So now over here, we have a few more things going on. So right here we have a lock. This locks your grid in place. So see right now it's locked and it won't move. I can just draw on top of it. If I unlock it, then I can drag it around. And sometimes you don't want the center in the middle of your canvas. Maybe you want it off centered. So this lets you do that. You can move it wherever you want. And once you've decided where you want to have it, let's just move it up uh, over to this corner. You can hit the lock button there. It's locked in place and now I can't drag it anymore. I can draw on it, but I can't drag it. Another useful tool over here is this little eye. If I click on it, my grid seems to disappear. So really what it is, is just whether you can see the grid or not. The grid is still active as long as it's blue on the top toolbar. I'll just double tap that center and I'll put it right back into the center of my canvas. And now I can lock it in place there so I can draw on it. It also allows me to zoom in and out when it's locked in place and it doesn't change it. And the last option up here, this little symbol right here, you can extend the lines beyond the symmetry lines or the other option is that it, it stops at the symmetry line. So right now it's extending past. I can draw anywhere and it just duplicates it. Now, if I touch it again, I get the strokes are going to stop at the lines. So see how I can't draw past the symmetry line within that one pie section. So that keeps me drawing only in that pie section. That can be handy for certain things as well. So let's experiment with the X axis and the Y axis. So we're gonna try the Y axis to begin with. And I'm gonna zoom out here so that you can see it's divided right down the center. 
and anything I draw on one side is going to show up on the other side. So that's handy for a basic mirroring uh, artwork. Again, this is the x-axis, so it'll work the same way. Any design I draw on the top half of my canvas will show up again on the bottom half of my canvas. And now we're going to try on turning both the x and the y-axis on. So we do that by making them both blue. And now you can see both axes are there. Let's just experiment drawing. So see how it's perfectly mirrored on both. So this mirrors across, this mirrors across. So it's all a mirrored design. This is different from the radial. So if I took the radial down to four sections, what you're going to see when you draw that same design is see how it's rotated around. So that's different than mirroring. So that gives you two different options to work with there with the axis and with the radial. So now let's change our radial to five points instead of the four. I enjoy that I can do odd numbers as well as even in this app. It lets me choose a five section or a seven section. You can get some really unique designs using the odd number radials. So here I'm allowing my strokes to cross over the sections. As I showed you above, you can turn that on or off, but I'm allowing the strokes to go across. So no matter where I draw them, they're going to repeat all the way around. So you see as I draw my lines here, they're not perfectly smooth and that is a realistic look to them. But if you want them to smoothen up a little bit, here's what I would suggest. This is a really nice feature in Autodesk Sketchbook. Here we have predictive stroke and you have all the way from one all the way up to five and you can play around with this. So at one, Let's say I were to draw, let's try a spiral. That's where it really shows up well. See how it has all my little kind of bumps still, but it smooths it a little bit. So we'll try another one at two. This is how you learn what you like with this. Let's move it up to three and try another one. And see each one is getting smoother and smoother. And number four, now we're getting into the really smooth. Now you have to be careful with predictive stroke because if you put in a lot of loops and swirls, it averages it out and see how here you don't get as much of a curl as we did in the first one. So you can kind of play around with that. You can use different settings depending on what you're looking for in your design. So here I have it on a five and see how smooth my line comes out now. So that's a really fun feature you can play around with whether you're looking for more of a hand-drawn look or a smoother look. The next thing I'm going to talk about here is using the layers over on the right hand side here. You can add more layers. I recommend that when you're playing around with your design that anything new you add to it you put on a separate layer and this gives you the flexibility of getting rid of new items that you've just drawn in without affecting the rest of your design. So I'm going to move this up to 12 sections and I'm going to show you how I create a mirror in my radio using different layers. So this first one I've drawn, I've just drawn this simple stroke. And let's say I want that simple stroke to be mirrored on the other side of the symmetry lines so that I have these perfect petals. So let's try drawing it by hand. And this is the look I'm going for, but I want them to be mirrored more exactly. So this is how I do it. I go into the layers and I duplicate the layer I just drew. And now I'm gonna go into the transform tool, which is this one right here and it opens up in a window to show me just my canvas without the symmetry lines. And what I want to do is I want to flip this particular layer, because it's only going to do the layer I'm on, and I'm going to flip it over the Y axis. So I choose this one right here and see what it did there? A perfect mirror of all my radial little strokes. So it kind of gives you the kaleidoscope look, but you're doing it yourself. So if you really like the way that it looks, then you can merge these two layers together. And if you don't, then you can just delete the layer you just did. So I'm going back into my symmetry. You have to make sure that they're on. If they're surrounded in a blue line, they're on. If they're blue, they're on. So you just have to make sure that your symmetry is back on and my predictive stroke I want on. And I'm gonna merge these two layers. So touching on that one, I just choose merge and it merges with a layer underneath it. So now all those strokes are on one layer and I've created a new layer on which I can draw something new. So the way that I design is I just keep going back in and adding more and more detail. So here I'm going to zoom in 
And see when I zoom in, see how down here, it's telling me how far I've zoomed in and what the angle of my canvas is. And I'm going to bring my size of my brush down a little and I'm gonna add in more detail. So I'm gonna try that trick again on mirroring in. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of detail at the top and I'm gonna add something else down here, but I'm gonna cross over the line. Oh, my pen is skipping a little bit there. Sometimes it will do that if my screen is a little bit dirty. And there we have it. But I did it all on that same layer and that's not what I meant to do. So backwards I go and up to the new layer. So make sure you're on your new layer. It will be outlined in blue on your layers panel because you don't want to have to hit undo, undo, and it's frustrating because if you get the perfect design and realize that you didn't do it on a separate layer, it's hard to get that design back. So we're gonna try that again. It's probably not exactly what I did the first time, but now it's on its own layer. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna duplicate the layer. I'm gonna go into my transform tool and hit the Y axis mirror. And I flipped it there. And now you can see, I do like that. So I'll go in, touch it, and merge it down just with the layer underneath it. You can leave these separate and work your way through, or you can merge them all on. As soon as you're happy with it, you can go ahead and merge it onto one. Because as you go further into the design, you do need things on one layer in order to do fills and that kind of thing. So now you have some of the basics on how to draw in symmetry on Autodesk Sketchbook on the iPad Pro. It's one of the ones I use a lot for my Mandela's and I really enjoy it. So go have fun with these techniques and if you share your designs on Instagram, tag me at JSP Create. I would love to see what you've come up with. Thanks so much for joining me in this tutorial and we'll see you next time.